about to discover the dark side. The Craft is a 1996 American teen supernatural horror film directed by Andrew Fleming. The plot follows Sarah Bailey, a teenage girl with unusual abilities who moves through Los Angeles and befriends a group of outcast girls who are rumored to be witches. The girls pursue witchcraft on their own gain and subsequently experience negative repercussions. This film stars Robin Tooney, Parisa Balk, Nev Campbell, and Rachel True. This film was a surprise hit, earning 6.7 million in its opening weekend and 55.6 million worldwide against a budget of only 15 million. In years since its release, the film has gained a cult following that even spawned a reboot and sequel with the 2020s the Craft Legacy. Join myself, Bobby Blockbuster, and Monk as they discuss this iconic film. Hey, folks, man, we are back with another episode of Class of Cinematics. We're doing this all as my co host. We got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, so today we got a pretty interesting film, man. We're going to be talking about The Craft from 1996, mm -hmm. man. So, what do we like about this film, man? I mean, first things first, dog. This film did what witches or did for witches, what Lost Boys did for vampires, yeah, as far yeah. as with the teenage <laughs> element and bringing it in like that. And I love what it did for young women in horror. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a it was a tone setter for the ladies. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that it took witches out of Salem, put them in the classroom, put them in the home mm -hmm. and, and, and put them in the form of these four young teenage misfits. You know what I'm saying? And there's already a lo enough that's going on at that young age, you know, with, with trying to find yourself, trying to find your place in the world. And on top of the fact, um, where you fit in on the social, stat social status bar, you know what I'm where saying? Did, where did you, or how did you see this film first? Was it, I, was it when you saw it when it first, when it first came I out, did or? see it when it first dropped on uh, VHS, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, in, in 96 seeing it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was a horror buff at it as, as a little dude. So... You know, I was like, oh, man, which is, you know, I'll check it out. But the, the the way that it changed the the female presence in the school that I went in, you know what I'm saying? Like, they talked about it. They raved about it. You know, mm -hmm. people got a little more gothy. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Honestly, <laughs> this thing, I saw this when I was in college, man. Somebody mm -hmm. had it on tape. This had to be like 97 winter, early winter, 97, around that time. And um, it's interesting because... I feel like this was a film where the, the goth kids were seen by yes. the weird because there, there was always kids in like like the characters in this film you know that were in, into that kind of stuff and they kind of stuck to themselves they had their own little groups mm -hmm. you know kind of mingling on the fringes of, of all the other popular kids and and i feel like this was their moment to kind of you know well, be recognized you know yes. see people like them and, and you know, instead in of film, instead of being like more withdrawn they put themselves on the forefront look mm -hmm. at me this is who i am appreciate me for who I am and how I present myself, you know, and I think that was that was magnificent. That you know that a film could 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 help give um, people in that light that amount of confidence and that level of security in, in themselves. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they was in the spotlight because a lot of people saw this film, man. I just remember the big buzz around it, and also I think what helps this story, you know, it is you know the outcast kind of getting their due, kind yes. of a revenge of the, the nerds kind of thing, and also I think. The previous examples we had were things like the Witches of Eastwick, and which was still kind of um, what's my man, um, um, his film, you know, in effect, and he just had women around him. Um, it was, was in effect Jack Nicholson's film, right? Okay, you know what I'm yeah, and yeah, you're right. Ensemble, whereas yeah. in this, you got the witches without that character. It's just all them. I, I definitely do like the story, man. Especially um, the interesting thing I think is that we have um, these girls that are practicing witchcraft trying to become witches, but then you right. got someone who is also a natural witch right. who runs into this group, you know, which which makes things interesting. And also well, she's a, a someone that's out of town or a stranger that this group yes, takes in and yes. brings in under her wing. You you so, you get that fish out of water element, yeah. but you know, but like you said, this is so much more than just a, a witch story. It's it's a it's a story about growth. It's also a story about, you know, how you maneuver and deal with things and problems that are still existing in this world today. Things like being outcasted or bullied for uh racial indifferences, body shaming, slut shaming, social financial and, status. And, I mean, and, all and of these bonus, things. Whenever you can put something like this in high school, I think there's an untapped market for like like for movies like like you think about the faculty, which is really yeah. based on the body snatchers, 
but you put it in a high school. I think there's a lot of room left to put things in a high school that hasn't been well, tapped into, even though this is, uh, you know, one of the shining examples of that. And, and it shows that you got a lot to work with just well, because of the dynamics of high school in general. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that teenagers handle situations differently than adults mm -hmm. and that also that gives you like you said it gives you a way wider spectrum like you know there are some that will handle these situations as a seasoned adult with uh, with uh, experience and knowledge and maneuvering through it and there are others that are just going in green like man i'm leading with my chest yeah. however it goes it's going to go because we're figuring this out every step of the way it's just interesting because i think um who's, who's our main character uh, uh rob uh, robin tooney uh, play Sarah, or Sarah, I guess Sarah, you, if I was a uh, bulk, I mean, yeah, that's, well, nah, that's the, I'm, think, I'm pretty sure. Toonie like, should be the, yeah, she, yeah, the, Sarah, the, the lead, the main the, she's the main, she's not okay. the leader, but she's the yeah. main character. This, yeah, this whole thing is mostly from her POV, but, but, but it's interesting because her natural witch stuff is cool. It is. And then nothing really goes bad until they start doing things that are, start, that are going to empower the other girls. And then yes. they do that crazy spell, which is, Interesting to me because at first they, they kind of have a um want um um use their powers for good in a way they they want to mm -hmm. stop the the bad stuff from happening Whoa. to them and um and just just kind of make things more even and and I like that the lesson we get from it is the, the magic is neither good or evil but if you mess it's, with it in a certain way it's going to come back it has yes. to come back and and you know? that that's the thing yes to your point you know. Uh, that's what one thing that this story did do there was always like a negative connotation about witchcraft oh you're worshiping the devil something like that this film shows us that it's not about the witchcraft it's about the user how uh, is your heart on leaning more towards the evil side or the pure side and you know i do like the fact though that they exemplify the fact that anyone can get touched and you would that their main focus is writing the wrongs the, that they, they were done to be it either by the individuals or their situations you know what i mean like you know you got um rachel or rochelle she's getting bullied via racist bullying and so the the the, the chick that keeps messing with her she casts a spell on her to, to make her hair fall out and then you know as as that progressively gets worse you know she then wants to cry the victim so when you were when you were being a bully to someone else, you had no emotional compass to the effects of what you were doing. But now that something bad is happening to you, you want to be victimized. Yeah, there is that. But then there's also that the, what I like about these spells is like it's doing what you ask, but it's also doing it in the most base way, which yes. is kind of like I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean for it to go <laughs> that bad. And you know what? And, and she, honestly, I don't even think she wanted this girl's hair to fall out. She no, just she's wanted her to stop, stop messing with messing her. With her. But the spell is like, like they, they kind of have a, a and, vibe on their own and if you leave room for that's, interpretation. That's the know? thing too, like, cause we see it more so with, with Sarah's character when she puts the love spell on Chris. Like first it starts out as an innocent crush. I mean, this dude, like he, he, he lied on her, you know, said that he slept with her when he didn't. Cause he was, you know, he has to keep his, his reputation up and all this stuff. And so she just wanted him to like her. So she puts a little love spell on him and he's got this little crushy crush, but then it becomes an uncontrollable obsession to the point where my man tries to rape her. Yeah, like, it, you know it, what I'm saying? It's, it's, I like how we're seeing that too. It's all funny games until, cause um, like, like even they're even just laughing at the soul hard in the beginning when he's carrying the yes. books and all that. Yes. And even as I'm looking at that, I'm like, man, this is messed up. Like, like what, what, what's yeah. the, honestly, I mean, it, I, you but know, is, 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 it, it is asshole behavior. Is but, that yeah. as messed up as going into school the day before and saying, oh, yeah, she, I, I screwed her. She was the worst lay ever. Everybody, let's finger point the new girl and, uh, and, and point her out. It's, and It's dickish behavior. But, but like I said, I like how the spells are. We're getting that. We're like, you know, we're yes. like, you're like you want revenge. And so, so here we get around to um, um, Nancy's character and her. I, I don't even know what she asked for. But it seems like it's she asked for it's like ultimate power. She yeah, wants like so, so she wants to level up. It's interesting how hers manifests because I think part of what happens to her was that her stepdad or was her uh, stepdad? Yeah, and he has the heart attack and he dies. I think that was part of the spell. But for it was. her, it wasn't no remorse enough. It was like fuck. No, nah, she was like yeah. You when, know what when, when, when dude, so, her and her mom started so, doing the happy <laughs> dance, they were like one hundred seventy five thousand. So, 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 yeah, so I would imagine <laughs> if, if her adversary was the racist pool girl and her hair started falling out. She would have been gloating. She would have had no remorse, like, F you. But it seems like the other characters, you know, 
Well, their things have consequences, and, and and it's almost like, damn, I I didn't I didn't mean for it to go that far. Nancy was you relentless know? with her get back. Like yeah, she she yeah, felt she, the world has been wronging her for a long time, yeah, so she's gonna wrong it. So, but you know what? One thing I did like, I liked Bonnie's aspect because see, her spell she cast a spell on herself because she was all was, scarred yeah, up, yeah. and you know she wanted to remove the scars and be seen as beautiful on the outside because she knew she was beautiful on the inside but then what ended up happening to her the, the repercussions of her spell was then she became like the ultimate narcissist like she she was so intrigued and and and, and by herself that she became almost everything that they all hated and 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 everybody else that they were surrounded by you know in this in the student body like mm -hmm. she was she was arrogant she was pompous she was overly confident which was good but she was conceited in such a way where even sarah quote, pulls her out she was like you know you used to be cool and now you just like you're kind of like an asshole now yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying remember where you you know what you were going through before you put this spell on yourself <laughs> see but, but it makes me i wonder if that was the curse or that was just her personality all along yeah because she didn't come across like that at all no. like in the very, she was so withdrawn really humble and, and, and you know just and withdrawn and, and yeah the confidence of of because her, her thing it was really messed up but but i feel like the average person getting that, they're going to be like, oh, I'm good now. They're not going to turn into a shallow. So so that had to be encouraging. I mean, it had like, to be. But then I also. I think that's the brilliant part of this. Having that juxtaposition, giving you what you want, but also bringing in the question, is this what you really want? Yes. You know, like like a lot of people now, they like, I mean, they think, you know, money, they say, it's cliche. They say, you know, money won't solve all your problems. Won't buy happening. I mean, personally, I would like to try. And see <laughs> hey, man, let me, let me test drive that. Let me test drive that car. I'll tell you how I feel later. You know, I'm with you 100%, bro. But there are some situations. I've seen shows about the lottery room in my life. There's a, there's a series of that. And then you see how people sometimes get what they seemingly want and, yeah. and realize once they're in it, actually in it, yeah. you know, instead of well, looking at it from the outside, it is not really what they want. You know, you know what I think I, that's what these curses are doing Absolutely, to, to these women. You, you know what I really liked when it came to Nancy? I mean, like I said, she was on this relentless quest for the ultimate power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she started to get that. She, you know, from the outside looking in, she started to come across as the most powerful of the four. And, you know, when she realized that, you know, Sarah was the only one with natural ability, you know, she started to get this like this this envious jealousy like element Starscream, towards yeah. yeah like towards her <laughs> like she kept trying to manipulate mm -hmm. uh rachel uh, rochelle and bonnie and and like almost turn the three of them against sarah like almost like they just used her they knew they needed four mm -hmm. you know to, to to get the ball rolling and then she's like yeah you know what you need four for the big curse of yeah power. but we but we don't need you now because now we already got but touched also, and we're making this also, work I feel like the other girls really just wanted their spell. They, they just, yeah. whatever they got out of it, that was cool enough. But then also the repercussions was kind of getting crazy. But she wanted to go to that next level. We'll like, like even that scene in the bookstore mm -hmm. and the, and the um, author is like, are you trying to, yeah. she's, she's like, give me the book. Like, yeah, I'm going to pay for it. Book. Don't, like, don't like worry about friends. what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, even the, like that, 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 that woman, I, I loved her character because she's also at one point in the very beginning, she's kind of, Helping them enlighten she sees they showing interest. But yeah. then at the same time, she's also warning them, like, yo, yeah. be careful with this stuff. Yeah, it and comes back. You're like, yeah, pretty you know? much, hey, it's the karma train, yeah. you know. But the thing is, too, is that I also feel like what I gathered, um, I didn't pick this up, you know, earlier on when I was watching this younger, but what I what I did start to notice heavy on my rewatches for this uh this go around is that I feel like Nancy was uh was manipulative. And also kind of trying to keep uh, Bonnie and Rochelle under her thumb anyway. She made them feel like without me mm -hmm. befriending you guys, then you all would have no friends. Yeah, yeah. No one, you know, so she was. It, it is that toxic kind of friendship. Like, yeah. Like, like, there's, there's oh, without me, we here. wouldn't be witches. Yeah, but but yeah. even before that, without me, you would have no friends in the school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I am the leader. So when when Sarah, Sarah comes to the crew and they start to gravitate towards her because she is mm -hmm. wholesome and wholehearted and actually has this natural ability, it makes Nancy like furious. Like yeah. you said, Starscream is the best <laughs> example. Cause yes, she is like, man, yeah, man. we got, we, we got to get you out the yeah. click. We got to get you out the click. But you know, yeah. another thing that I thought was really cool. That's why I like Ninja Turtles. There's four mm -hmm. of them and there's different personalities even though leonardo's technically the leader but they're all like in it together like we yeah think it thin. this ain't Ninja but, turtle you know yeah, yeah i mean because they all have a role to play as as, as leo might be the leader yeah. raf's the enforcer mm -hmm. so without him you know 
Man, bodies ain't dropping like that, yeah, you know. So, so, so yeah, yeah. That, 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 <laughs> but also, too, I feel like in in a, in a uh, way, just from what they did previously to get their initial spells, there is a force working on all of them. And in her case, I think that ultimate evil force that she's trying to contact is, in a way, poisoning her soul a little bit and manipulating yes. itself too, bringing yes. itself forth. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Well, which which says evil. Tends to do in things like this. well, I mean, uh, the, the 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 great and wonderful Peter Peter Parker said it best: "With great power comes great responsibility." Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. you know, so this 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 comes into play with, with this yeah, too, you know. Yeah. But another thing I thought that was cool with this character dynamic is how each one of them um, kind of play the role or kind of embrace uh, one of the four elements. Mm -hmm. Like you got you got Bonnie as wind, you got Rochelle as water. Nancy Earth because of her humbleness and, and well groundedness, but then Nancy as fire. You know what I mean? And and it's almost kind of, kind of remind me of like the fifth element in a sense. That's how like say, when you, but, I mean we've been doing this all the time, element, bro. Element, <laughs> but, that that would be that would be the power that they that the entity that they pray to. I'm assuming. You know, but um, I, I you know, <laughs> but you know, at the same time, it's like you know, it's it's, it's one of those like you know, when we when our forces combine together, we make Captain Planet. Like that, they they would not be this strong if they were not united. You know, <laughs> but but yeah, man, and I just you know, I think that that was really cool, and it helped like really enhance this story and the whole dynamic, and also it it made each character stand out as individuals but more powerful in the group setting you know what i'm saying not just in the story arc but on the screen you know what i'm saying the personalities man like I, I think that's a great thing that's strong and i think it what helped people make this thing a hit people identify with certain characters more yes. and, and even like 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 the significance of rachel true being there yes it's just this gothic nerdy black girl being represented on tv when, when there were kids like this in real life yes. and they had no representation and i think that was a big significant thing um she actually know. spoke on that in the interview that she did uh, on the uh, behind the scenes or special features mm -hmm. or whatever in my dvd yeah. that was very yeah. yes and very important it was brilliant i mean yes. um you got nev campbell and who at the time was was coming off of one of the most popular um shows on tv like ever you party know of five saying? party of five <laughs> you know so um i don't remember seeing um robin in anything in she was she a year before she was in uh empire records oh, okay, okay yeah That's her claim that was that yep and uh farah uh Faruza, uh Bob, she's been in a couple things i think later on she would do american history you X know they and, say uh, some other stuff but she, but she played um dorothy in return oh, to yeah, Oz. yeah return to Oz. that's a crazy <laughs> movie. but, but see, so she's been surrounded by witches all the time but watch this, you would never remember her from that we might need to do that movie too yes I think that, that, that one was kind of creepy man, dog that, creepy that was creepy then, and you know it's funny since we're since we're movie, speaking man. on 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 Faruza balk and and her like her being uh, around this witch element you know it was sad that she actually was a witch in real life. Like some of the co uh, co stars were saying that she was a witch, and she denied it. She was like, "Nah, man." But I mean, but, but, you know, she, but I, the thing is, she didn't do herself no favors because after this movie, dog, she bought the oldest old occult bookstore that was going out of business in and in L.A. They, they said they were going to turn it into like some kind of a food restaurant, and she wanted to save it. But of course, all that you know, once once the media found that out, they're like, "Oh, she bought the occult <laughs> store. She's really a witch. She, she was being herself on screen." An interesting thing was like 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 I said around this era, and even before this movies come out, but but like and, and since then, like a uh, Wiccan that that became a major thing that people practice yes. which is a branch of people call it witchcraft but but it's, it's like it's kind of paganism same, or something yeah, right kind of the same things that these characters were doing in mm -hmm. this film and the books and the lore and stuff like that you know so, so it never really went away it's a thing yes. that's, that's out and, there and and like i said you know i mean i'm just i'm pretty much just piggybacking on what you said but i love the the diversity in this cast because i mean you know it, it it creates this 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 level of relatability. Every anyone can watch this film and find someone that they can yeah, relate and to. They've with, all got as, um, different levels of things that they yes, are social and outcasts for. And it's know? not just some of it is, is 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 it's not just what you your outward appearance is. Some of it is your mannerisms, what's going on on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, they said when they first wrote the uh, the story that um, Rochelle's character before they they casted Ra uh, Rachel True. Um, her initial thing was she was going to have an eating disorder, but then they decided that it would be way more impactful to have someone who was non-Caucasian in the group to just, you know, yeah. just enhance the level of relatability and make it more widespread. And that, 
I, I feel like that that would be way more impactful, and it was yeah. way a and way like better it idea. A wider, broad, yes. broader spectrum of the yes, you know, yes, one hundred percent. This episode is brought to you by Classic Cinematics Merchandise. Now, y'all know just as well as I do how much an unwanted phone call can mess up your day. But with this Classic Cinematics cell phone case, I might not be able to stop those douchebags from calling. But damn, if I don't look cool when I talk to them, don't be afraid to be cool. Get yours today by clicking the link below. Yeah, viewers, one hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, but but yeah, speaking on that, man, like the horror elements, I think are really solid in this, man. You know, yeah. you got the uh. The music and the mood and the atmosphere, like even from the very beginning, man, I love how when um um what's the damn Sarah Sarah moves into her house and my man with the snakes, yeah, Ooh. I found this for you. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this film does a great job poking and prodding with, with um supernatural horror elements, and, it and does. even that translates into the effects work that they put into this film, man, to to a lot of degree. Like 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 at the time, you know. This is still kind of on that um, post Jurassic Park wave, so so you know a lot of movies are using um, you know CGI effects, but then there's also still practical stuff, um, you know, mixed a lot of practical. So so I love what we're getting with the visuals of this film, and even the, the things that aren't full on horror. Like, like yeah. if you look at um, um, uh, Nancy's, uh, not Nancy, um, Bonnie's um, back scars and yeah. stuff, and I'm just like, yo, they did a yeah, great they job. Did a great job. Well, portraying this stuff and, like 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 the, the visually it holds up in those elements absolutely man. the creep the factor is there and i like the fact they took the less is more approach mm -hmm. definitely you know um but what they did what these effects did is it really enhanced the majestic feel for the film like like the, the little things like that's what impressed me like in the beginning scene where sarah's at school and she's making her pencil yeah. stand up and spin <laughs> um yeah. even like you know the the, the it's, subtleties when like it's a little when, bit um on the nose yes but, but I'm, I'm like but, man come on man but, let's, or, let's get to the or the, the things sometimes that, you don't have the time to do the super no, subtle stuff so but, let's, like let's, let's get to the point but, and that scene definitely yes shows or like you what we're working like with. The, the 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 scene like the little things like that if you're not paying attention you'll miss like when nancy opens up the book and that that picture of the beach comes to life oh, the lightning that. starts crashing yeah. the water <laughs> and then what that does is that kind of gives us a preamble to um the, the beach scene, which was actually very intense with all the waves crashing and the lightning. And then you get the cool, you know, Nancy walk on water element. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the light is a feather, feather stiff as a board. Um, they said that that was the only time they really used um, heavily enhanced CG because they put Rachel True on a, on a hydraulic mm -hmm. lift yeah. and they had to, you know, use that out. But I mean, dude, that alone, that scene alone, you I'm, I can only imagine how many young women... Uh, you know, having to sleep over, try to do that shit. Yeah, I had to get a finger splint I mean, afterwards. This film probably was a favorite for sleepovers back in the day, yes. man. Like, as soon as it came out, man. Yes. That, that's kind of the fun of when we go back and, and look at these things, man. I just imagine being in that era when these things came out. Yes. The blockbuster, picking the tape off the wall, grabbing your snacks, and going home to watch it with be your family or your yes. friends or whatever, man. Like, and, like it's great. You know, man. another part that I really liked was when you get into the third phase, the uh, the importance and the heavy usage of like mirrors. You know what I'm saying? Because what it did for me is it also shows that it's giving them opportunities to continuously look at themselves and the effect and the impact of what they're doing. Like, there's this one man. scene when when Rochelle sees <laughs> the girl and all. I mean, her all her hair is out, dude. She looks at at herself in the mirror and her reflection turns away. Like I, that that was a little subtle thing, but I was I like, whoa, that, that is dope. That, that is that. dope. And then, you know, I, I also really like, you know, at the when we get into the the, the very end of the film, you know, they, they they really they they took the throw bugs on it uh, scene <laughs> that, that we talk about all the time. They took that to the next level, dog. You know, they had worms, but, but they had a lot of dude, bugs. And they snakes. had over and three thousand snakes they used. Wow, all kinds. Let me see. Crazy, what, what what did it say they had? Boas, water snakes, garter snakes, rat snakes, a 10 foot Amazon <laughs> constrictor, and rare albino snakes. <laughs> that was, that was I like would a, have had a heart attack. A snakes, I would have had a heart that's attack. Like, like, all right, I can't do this. The, the funny thing is, um, <laughs> you know, even from the, um, the homeless guy in the very beginning, but then there, there's a scene where, um, where Nancy's hands turn into snakes. And then yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Like, like, it's you know, crazy to me. Yes. Man, yes. Like, Put it this way, younger monk, I would have been scared. I, I'm gonna hit the light switch and I'm jumping in. I would have been scared. But, but when, now. I was, when, I was, when I was in college and I watched this, though, it was like, I, I, you know, it, it, 
these things played out different, man. Like I said, man, I always tell people I hated horror as a young kid because it scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe in my, my mid twenties, I started going back and, and rewatching the stuff that was that freaked me out, and I was mm. like, oh, that that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? I see why my parents, who were way older, you know, I'm a kid enjoyed this watching these films in the genre man and, and it became one of my favorite genres just because of the creativity and the, yes you and know the, and the wildness that, that i was able to witness on film you know you know and for me like you know this this started off as my favorite genre once i mm -hmm. once i transitioned from cartoons um i dove knee deep into the horror element L just luckily fortunately enough for me my mom's um, allowed me and my brother to to watch these films because we told her we told her with our chest out and straight face like <laughs> we can handle it and then we watched that shit and then when we we're back in our room like man keep the damn ass light on that shit was scary as shit hey if you hear me having a nightmare bro wake me up you know but you know the next night when we were watching another scary movie we're like hey man don't say shit about what we talked about last night that conversation never happened man let's let's go ahead and watch this uh watch this zombie flick right quick you know what i mean um and and then you know of course um at that age it was like it was the the, the element of fear like mm -hmm. that feeling that 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 sensation in my body the butterflies the, the 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 heart palpitations and um something that you think about long after it's over you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. something that can give you nightmares or, or affect your sleeping or just make you view the world differently like i said when you are young you are so impressionable and to put these thoughts in your head um it's not just the monster element for me it was the situations in which these things happen you know what i'm saying they didn't just make a monster scary it's what do you do when the lights go off what do you do if you get locked in a store uh what do you do if if, if it's raining really hard and then you the car spins out of control i mean the, this this element of fear i was not you know used to cartoons didn't do that so that's what really drew me to the horror genre as a whole and then as i grew um i you know i looked deeper into how movies were made and found all my appreciation and enjoyment into like the makeup the costume arts and the the originality in the stories people think this up like some of this stuff i'm like man you actually had to think that up man what the, what the <laughs> hell what the hell goes on what what goes on in that brain that you don't write down like that's the stuff that probably is really man, scary key, man. <laughs> being honest man damn star wars got a lot of crap crappy elements in it like you know what i'm saying we yes we got these uh, people with, with magical powers and, and you know what I'm saying? Swords and, that glow. Swords and, <laughs> and, 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 and evil influence, the dark side. The dark like, side, like, yes. This, the thing about it, man, like, I always look at it just like this, man. So I read a quote recently that said, or about years ago that said, there's only like 12 stories you tell in the movies and they yeah. are regurgitated, regurgitated, chopped up, reprocessed, yes. remixed over and over so it's yeah. like there's only so many stories you could tell but when you start doing things like adding elements you know like this like this could have if you take away the, the witch stuff this could be a normal regular um high, school, a high drama. school drama yeah yeah but but instead we're adding these supernatural elements that, that amp it up to, to another degree yes. man so 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 really i love when when things are doing that when storytelling is doing that and i think that's what ultimately what the crab did you know it's, it's, yes. it's not a lot of like like it is witches, but if you break it down to the base level, it's nothing really new in here under the sun. You know what I'm no. saying? And they remix it at a right time that I think audiences were seeking out something like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. At the right time when, when when culturally things were progressing in a, in, a, in a certain way. You know, like I said, like the whole golf movement. And yes. Uh, hot topic, yo. This is like the hot yes. topic. Yes. Got mad gear what? based off of this movie, yo. They came out. They was happy when yes. this came out. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, though, you know, when they, you know, after this joke came out, you know how many young women started wearing the spike collars, the fishnet things, and, you know, yeah, it was man. crazy. Spider web, you know, stuff going on. Um, But that was cool, you know, because I always, I appreciate individuality. Um, and even if, you know, it seems like somebody is just following what's trending, if it makes you feel good, do it. And this, mm -hmm. this film, what it did is it just, it really, it gave the confidence in, 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 in these, these individuals, man, to just be who you are. You like, you can, if, if you feel that that's how you're feeling this morning, when you woke up, you want to throw some black eyeliner on, or you can be a little more witched out or whatever, <laughs> do that. You know, the sun can be shining tomorrow. You can be a cheerleader, whatever the case may be, you know? Um, and th that's why I think this teenager element really works because this is at an age where all of us were young ones and none of us have a full idea of 
who we are going to be as an adult. This is when we are still figuring it out and finding ourselves and what is most comfortable for us. You know what I mean? As individuals and in our, our group settings. I mean, think of how many people that you might have known or associated with when you were this age versus to where you're at now. Do you still have these friends? Do you yeah. still do you still listen to that music? Do you still do you still dress that way? Do you yeah, still feel man. those feelings? You know that that rebellious buck the system feeling um, that you might have been feeling that 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 drew you more towards it's this like style of life. Wondering if, if um, Bonnie and Rochelle are still friends with Sarah. Like she kind of leaves it on the way. There's like she like, almost <laughs> dropped a tree on him, bro. Yeah, she was but, like, but I think they can get over that. I think man, honestly, I don't ultimately. know how you get over someone trying to kill you. Yeah, but ultimately, <laughs> it was because of what's her name? You Nancy. Know, they came back around, Nancy. And but Nancy. but see, but that was the thing too. You know, I, it's funny though. The only thing that makes me think that it won't be because she heard them talking that shit. Like, oh, she ain't got no powers no more. Exactly. Well, and see, that's the thing. Because see, what it did is that they exposed themselves right there. Yeah. Because it's like, are you really coming back around? Because you really want to be my friend, or y'all just want to just leech off my powers? Because you know, I was looking into some some like. Some some little uh, trivia trees. and stuff, fam, fam <laughs> stuff on Reddit and yeah. stuff, and they said that you know the one underlying factor is that since Sarah was the only one with natural powers, she was the one who was able to kind of like bring the powers out of everybody else. Without her, they would have just been you know three chicks that were really in, intrigued mm -hmm. by this, but they would have never leveled yeah. up. She's never the one who yeah, who was right. able to kind of give them the extra push that they needed, but they were all leeching off her powers. So and I you know it's kind of like. You know, like with Rochelle and Bonnie coming back at the end, it's kind of like, you know, they were they were having withdrawal. They wanted they, they, they were like, yo, I need that fix. You know, yeah, you got that. You got that. <laughs> Heard you got that. Need that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. But the craft, I mean, and dude, and um, you know, uh, it's got a nice level of rewatchability. <laughs> I, I I did enjoy my rewatches. Um, I think that you know it still holds up. It's it's still like. Yo, um, I felt bad for the home girl though in the damn um, you know, shower room with the uh, I hate to say it, did, I, I did. She played Marsha Brady in like a. She was. A she was Marsha. She was. She was. <laughs> She was, <laughs> but you know what, you know, and, and what happened oh, to her, it's, wow. it's, it's messed up, Damn. but you know, I, my heart wouldn't racism let me, my heart wouldn't let me feel bad for her because the racism is disgusting to me. And I was like, you know what, if you weren't a racist piece but, of shit, you'd still have your head. But I think Rochelle felt a little bad. <laughs> she was like, she did. Damn. She did. Woo, but, deal, but she nailed that, that dog. She that what? was like, no splash. What? <laughs> and that's, that's the thing. Even the coach looked at her and see, because that was the first opportunity she, she got to actually show her talents and embrace what kind of coach you know it turns me out there because there's, there's a couple like blind spots like like what's the coach <laughs> that bad that he's not watching this girl die he's just gonna fall for the uh Hey, yo, like, like, she, she, cause she kept doing shit, like, like the first day. because they, because that's the <laughs> thing, like, like back first in the even, water, even though like, the, the hairless chick was right. was the one speaking on it, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I fully felt like she wasn't the only one that felt that way. Yeah. A lot of people in that school, they, 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 they had that feeling yeah, of yeah, Rochelle, and I mean, you didn't see a lot of diversity. Another swim team was, yeah. was yeah. fucking and weird. you didn't see a lot of diversity in the student body. Yeah, so yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah, a lot yeah. of them what probably the was story it, it, it said la but i mean no nah, i think it was like this probably some up, like you know what I'm saying? It, i mean it's probably around like, there it, maybe in, like, in like of LA. yeah in the in, in the like the, some, the, some, the uppity up, uppity uh, part of town yeah, you know because yeah exactly because <laughs> this also looked like it, it kind of gave me that like private school like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it was definitely like a, it was like a Catholic school, but it, or, or, one of them Jones you gotta pay to go yeah, to. Schools of community, but uh, yeah. well, which is wild because so that means uh, Rochelle's parents was they lived in that community and they was able to send her to the school, but it seemed like or maybe when, she got in on a, a swimming when scholarship. You look at it, though, Nancy's family seemed like to be the one that, that had the, the financial struggles. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it's I mean, like, apparently the stepdad was caked up and they didn't know, so maybe he was the one paying for her to get into the school. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I but know. I mean, I, I enjoyed this. I, I I thought it was a it was a good movie. Yeah. And like I said, man, I, ultimately at the end of the day, the, the 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 most important thing to me about this movie is what it did for the women. The women deserve to have a movie of this kind. You know, for them. You know, for strong female leads. The 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 movie revolves around women, and you know, and it it just it it just gives them something to fully embrace you know what i'm saying and as a man you know 
you can appreciate that. Good movies are good movies, yeah, regardless good movies to, to movie. that. I enjoyed this when I first yes, saw it, man. I, yes. was, I was in. Like, yes. I'm in. Like, so, tell yeah. me a good story. Oh, man, I don't uh, yeah, care. I don't if care it's if it's... Or, exactly. You know, so some 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 outlets now, they, they, they complain and they bitch or, or they would call something like this woke. Like, yeah. come on, bro. Like, shut up. Like, like, it's a movie about some teenage a witches doing some teenage yeah, witch shit. Yeah, What's woke about that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a movie. It's a movie. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. You know, get some popcorn, order a pizza, throw back a beer or something, your soda, whatever your your stick is, and just enjoy the ride. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Like, like this thing's definitely earned its. Uh, it's kind of surprising the rotten scores on it, but. Like I said, this film transcends that, man. You know, I don't. I haven't really met anyone who really hated this film. Oh, no, I mean, it's got a large cult following, following for a reason. I mean, and even though you know, it's ironic. I, I say this as much as I do because we do like a, a critique style show. But how many times are the critics wrong? How many times is there a movie that gets bagged on, and then next thing you know, but the masses love it. But mm -hmm. so what? Because. The, the higher ups and the, the, the people that get paid to do this and when you know you got all these degrees and, and all and all the analytics and stuff they're like oh i didn't like that but then you look at the stuff that they'll give 100 percent to and like man I, you gotta pay me to watch that mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean i don't know man i think we can bring this one mm -hmm. home but um, ultimately i had a good time watching this when i first saw it and re-watching it now man yeah. you know what i'm saying yep. I, I think it still holds up as an entertaining piece it's not perfect. There are, you know, better horror films out there. But I think for what it did with the genre and the time that yes. it hit, it, it had a big impact, man. And like I said, yes. I, I enjoyed this film, man. I'm with you 100%. Um, I, I, I can say everything you just said, but I would just say, you know, um, I like I like what it injected into the, the horror genre as well. Um, it, it separated itself while still being inclusive with what we would expect from a good horror movie. And, you know, like I said, I enjoyed my rewatch this time. I'll enjoy it the next time, too. You yeah, know? folks. So um, I guess you can check us out um, next week, man. Uh, what do we got next coming up, man? Um, uh, <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I supposed to keep it a secret? No, I mean, by the time this comes out, you know. You oh, know, man, whatever. Fright Night, dog. Oh. Dinner's in the oven. <laughs> I, I, I watched that like last year and I had a blast. Oh, it's that's so a great. Really good movie. That's what I'm watching. That's definitely one that I saw on HBO in yes. the, uh, this era where we're going yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> like, switch it to oh, yeah. Like, but, Dude, but it's, it's a good movie. Man. It's, it's great. Really good Love movie, it. Man. Love right, it. Folks, man, we're going to catch y'all next time. Make sure you check out the links below, man. Buy some merch. Help us out, man. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about us. We're, we're right on the edge of a big milestone, man. We're probably about, by the time this hits, about 100 um, or less views to uh, subscribers to get to that 1,000, man. You know what I'm saying? So so go ahead. And Thank y'all for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell everybody about us. We got more on the way, man. We could do this show forever. Forever. There's so many movies that came out before the year 2000 that we can, you know, talk about. Yes. Man. And we definitely will, man. Damn right. Um. So, yeah. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at Classic Cinematics and you catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. And it's Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on the next show. All right, folks. We out of here. Peace. Uh, boom. Yeah. I don't know what the time is on. I can't see that far. Right? <laughs> I think it went for about a half an hour because it was damn near it was damn near 12 <laughs> when we started. Hey, couple glasses. I mean my, my contacts in. <laughs>